Good morning students. Welcome to the biology class of class 10th. Today we are going to start the next chapter that is photosynthesis. This is chapter number 6 and today the session that we are going to start is session 11. So uh, in photosynthesis chapter, let us uh, before starting with the chapter, let us see what is there in your syllabus that you need to study. Okay, photosynthesis, we will be studying about the process and its importance in the life in general that we'll be studying. Experiments to show the necessity of light, carbon dioxide and chlorophyll, formation of starch and release of oxygen and also carbon cycle is there in your syllabus. In today's session, uh, basically we will be just giving uh, 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 an introduction about the chapter and the things that I'll be explaining you today uh, will basically include about the process and definition of photosynthesis. Okay, then I'll be explaining you about what is chlorophyll, what is chloroplast, what are, uh, what are the raw materials for photosynthesis, then how is the regulation of stomata opening for letting in carbon dioxide, opening and closing of stomata, and the theory behind opening and closing of the stomata. In the previous classes uh, itself, I had explained you about uh, the, these theories, how the opening and closing of stomata takes place by potassium ion exchange theory and sugar concentration theory. So the same theories we will be moving a little bit ahead today. So these are the things we will be also studying about the adaptations in living uh, in the plants, in the leaves of the uh, of plants uh, for photosynthesis there are various types of adaptations that are found in the plants in order to carry out the process we all know plant possesses a very important pigment that is chlorophyll okay on account of the presence of this chlorophyll pigment plants are autotrophic in nature what is the meaning of autotroph means they can prepare their own food okay they can prepare the but this uh, production of food will require sunlight and there are some raw materials that also I'll be telling you. Okay, so plants, they are called as a self food producers because all living uh, living organisms, they need food. We know that uh, uh, whether it is animals or whether it is plant, all living organisms, they require food. Okay, animal obtain their food either from some other animals or from the plants. Okay, so such as so animals are heterotrophs because they cannot prepare their own food, but they depend for their food on other organisms. It may be plants or it may be animals also. Therefore, they are termed as heterotrophs. On the other hand, plants prepare their own food by themselves. Okay, so this property of preparing their food by themselves uh, takes place by the process of photosynthesis and due to this property, they are called as autotroph or they have autotrophic mode of nutrition. Now I have told you about that uh, that green plants prepare, prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis. So what is actually photosynthesis that we will be seeing here. Okay, I have told you that plants are uh, plants self food are the self food producers. Then what is the process of photosynthesis? Actually, this uh, photosynthetic process is a very important process that uh, which place uh, which takes place in all the green plants. Green plants, why are they green in color? Because they, because they possess the green color pigment, chlorophyll. Okay, by this process, plants are, can synthesize their food and for, the, for preparing the food, they require raw materials. What are the raw materials which are, require, which are required? They require the raw material that is carbon dioxide and water. From where, where, from where will the plants get carbon dioxide? They will get it from the atmo atmosphere. And how does that carbon dioxide will enter inside the uh, leaves or inside the plant? Through the pores, uh, special pores which are called as the stomatal pores. Okay. So plants are, uh, plants are, can synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water. So these are the raw materials in the presence of chlorophyll, the chlorophyll, the green color pigment of the plant and light energy. So this light energy is very essential means this, uh, the process of photosynthesis, photosynthesis will actually take, will require a light energy means it will take place in the daytime. Okay. So the essential chemical step in the process are the same as in all the green plant. When we see the overall chemical reaction that takes place, Okay, in the production of food by the plant is uh, almost uh, same in all the green plants. Means the process of uh, photosynthesis will be similar. 
the essential chemical steps will be same. Now, what is the definition of uh, this uh, photosynthesis? Photosynthesis can be defined as a process by which living plant cells containing chlorophyll produce food substances. The food substances are produced in the form of glucose and it is stored in various parts of the plant in the form of starch. Okay. So let us see the definition again. Photosynthesis is the process by which living plants or living plant cells containing chlorophyll produce food substances from carbon dioxide and water by using light energy. Okay. So this is the definition of photosynthesis. Let us move ahead with the importance of photosynthesis. I have told you what is what is the process of photosynthesis. Now we will be moving ahead to the next topic that is importance of photosynthesis or in other term what is the significance of photosynthesis as already I have told told you today itself that the basic uh, property or basic function of uh, photosynthesis is to prepare food not only for the plant itself but also for all the living organisms which are directly or indirectly depend on the green plants for their food okay food for all photosynthesis is ultimately the source of energy okay means uh, they trap the solar energy the ultimate source of energy is sun Okay, but it is through the photosynthesis that uh, the solar radiation or solar, solar energy is converted into the into chemical form and this is the source of food for all the living organisms. Okay, then directly for plants and indirectly for the animals since food uh, through, through photosynthesis the food is directly prepared in the green plant itself. So for them directly it provides the food whereas the heterotropic uh, organisms like other animals they indirectly they eat the food and they get the energy okay from that and indirectly for the animals and human beings who eat the plants or the plant eating or for the plant eating animals it is the same now this is the uh, this this was the basic thing that is it prepares food by this process by the process of photosynthesis food is prepared okay now let us move to the next uh, importance, next significance is oxygen supply. During the process of photosynthesis, a byproduct is formed that is oxygen. This oxygen is uh, what you can say it is an, uh, a byproduct which is formed and it needs to be eliminated out from the plant's body. So photosynthesis is the biological process or we may say it is the only biological process which releases oxygen into atmosphere and that, that is the reason green plants are considered as the lungs of the earth because they supply the earth with fresh oxygen and we can see we can say that oxygen is a life giving gas you can you, you cannot imagine your life without oxygen gas. Oxygen supports all life on the earth. No living being can remain alive without oxygen. You cannot imagine your life without oxygen. So from where does this oxygen comes? It comes by the process of photosynthesis which is carried out by the green plants. Next, uh, next importance or the next significance is it controls the carbon dioxide concentration. How does this photosynthetic activity controls the carbon dioxide concentration? As you all know, for the raw materials, uh, uh, during the process of photosynthesis, plants require carbon dioxide. One of the, one of the requirement is carbon dioxide. From where will it get carbon dioxide? The plants will get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Okay. So during the process of photosynthesis, during the daytime, through the stomata, the carbon dioxide will enter inside the plant and that carbon dioxide will, you, will be used as a raw material to carry out the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis helps to keep the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere constant. Means it, exchange of gases takes place. Means carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is given out. Carbon dioxide being released during respiration by living organisms is used during the process of photosynthesis. Now all living organisms during the process of their uh, respiration, during respiratory process, they, uh, they release uh, carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct or the byproduct of uh, uh, respiration is carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide which is released into, into the atmosphere as a result of respiration is used during the process of photosynthesis. So in this way this green plant or the process of photosynthesis also maintains and controls the carbon dioxide concentration. Now moving, moving ahead uh, this photosynthesis due to this uh, photosynthesis itself 
सप्लाई ऑफ एडिशनल प्लांट प्रोडक्ट इज डन ओके देर आर वेरियस एडिशनल प्लांट प्रोडक्ट लाइक टिम्बर फाइबर ऑयल ड्रग्स रबर रेजिस्ट ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द प्लांट्स एंड ट्रीज ओके एंड ऑल दीज आर द रिजल्टेंट और दट यू कैसे आउटकम ऑफ द फोटोसिंथेटिक प्रोसेस दैट दैट इज कंडक्टेड बाय द प्लांट ग्रीन प्लांट इट सेल्फ ओके सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज क्लोरोफिल ओके क्लोरोफिल ओके क्लोरोफिल दैट द वाइटल प्लांट पिगमेंट as we i as i have told you chlorophyll is the green color uh, pigment or the green color uh, plant pigment which uh, imparts a green color to the plant okay so green coloring matter found in the plants are called as chlorophyll they are contained in microscopic cell organelles and the cell organelles are called as chloroplast i'll be explaining you about chloroplast also okay uh, but before that we have to understand about chlorophyll itself if you if you uh, study about chlorophyll you will find that there are nine types of chlorophyll okay and out of these nine types of chlorophyll two types of chlorophyll that is chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b are found in most abundance they are found in more number more amount and they are most important and most useful for all the green plants means chlorophyll a out of the nine chlorophyll chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b plays a very important role in the process of photosynthesis chlorophyll b the chlorophyll absorbs blue and red light of both the end of the visible spectrum when we talk about the visible spectrum it has uh, it has seven colors it can be it can be understood by a wave your the colors of a rainbow when a white light passes through a prism it uh, the it scatters into seven uh, seven colors okay so one end is the blue color and the other and far end is the red color okay so these uh, blue and red color are absorbed by the by this chlorophyll pigment okay these are the these color uh, present on the end of the spectrum are called uh, uh, they are the color of the visible spectrum the color present at the end of the both ends of the visible spectrum it will reflect means it will ab uh, absorb the light of that range and it will reflect green color okay it will reflect green color since it will absorb res absorb rest of the light and reflect green color this uh, chlorophyll appears green in color that is why chlorophyll appears green the absorbed blue and red lights are most effective for photosynthesis those so are the absorbed uh, wavelengths or the absorbed uh, colors uh, which are absorbed by the chlorophyll are most effective for in order to carry out the process of photosynthesis now uh, as we all know light is very much important to carry out the process of photosynthesis okay but too much of light also is uh, uh, shows a deleterious effect on the plant on the chlorophyll chlorophyll is highly sensitive to light it means it requires an, an optimum temperature for a, a, a optimum amount optimum amount of sun ray of, uh, uh, of sun rays uh, for its proper functioning suppose there is too much of light it is too sensitive to light if the intensity of light is increased naturally the uh, working efficiency of chlorophyll will decrease chlorophyll is highly sensitive to light too much of light can destroy it the formation of chlorophyll itself depends on the exposure of plant to light so how does the formation of chlorophyll takes place it will take place when the plant is exposed to sunlight if the plant is not ex uh, uh, getting proper sunlight you may have seen sometimes that when a plant is kept under shade for a longer time or under the rock or in a shady place or in a, suppose you take a potted plant and keep it in the in a cupboard for some time what happens the chlorophyll disintegrates okay it degenerates the chlorophyll the, de the degeneration of the chlorophyll takes place and the and the plant turns yellow okay so the plant which is kept in a shade for a longer time you will find it turning yellow why because of the degradation or the disintegration of chlorophyll and new molecules of chlorophyll are not formed that is the reason behind it the formation of chlorophyll itself depends on the exposure of the plant to the light the grass growing in the shade under a stone it will turn yellow due to the non formation of new chlorophyll and not only the non formation of new chlorophyll but and also the, the disintegration of the older the older chlorophyll are degenerated they are disintegrated 
okay in the absence of light that is the reason a plant will turn yellow or yellowing of plant will take place okay so this was about the chlorophyll pigment that is that was the vital pigment plant pigment okay the next thing is chloro uh, chloroplast chloroplast which is the site of photosynthesis okay so chloroplasts are minute oval bodies bounded by double membrane you can see here the the vertical section of a chloroplast okay and you can see here the inner part um, uh, inner part and it is bounded by two layers you can see here two uh, two layers okay you can in, inside you can find piles of thylakoids which are called as the granum okay which is suspended in a ground substance which is called as stroma okay and these granum or these piles of thylakoids okay each e, e, e single pile is called as a thylakoid and all together it is termed as granum then you will find this granum uh, this piles of thylakoid they are placed like this and they are attached to each other okay by this fret channels these are called as the fret channels okay these are these fret channels are actually the interconnecting bars between the Uh, different granums or the, the different the different uh, between the different piles of thylakoids. Okay, so this is the structure of a chloroplast. So, uh, it can come in the examination. You need to practice for this diagram. Okay, so the interior contains. If you see the interior of this chloroplast, that will contain closely packed, flattened sacs, which are called as the thylakoids. These are the thylakoids. Okay, these are arranged in Uh, piles and all together they are termed as granum they lie in a colorless ground substance this colorless ground substance they lie this lie in the colorless ground substance which is called as stroma there may be uh, around 40 to 50 chloroplasts in a cell if you if you study a cell you will find 40 to 50 chloroplasts are present in the cell in a plant cell the pigment chlorophyll contains uh, contained in the wall of the thylakoid in the walls where is this pigment chlorophyll present it will be present this is a very important uh, point that you need to keep in mind where is the uh, chlorophyll pigment located it is located in the wall of the thylakoid okay so these are the thylakoid in the wall of the thylakoid these chlorophyll pigments are present or they are located chlorophyll is highly complex substance composed of uh, uh, composed of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and magnesium so these are the components which make um, which are the constituent elements which make up the chlorophyll pigment okay the chloroplasts are mainly contained in the mesophyll cells mesophyll cells are present in the leaves okay mainly contained in the mesophyll cells located between the palisade and spongy cells of the leaves in the leaves itself the long columnar cells the longitudinal cells are present which are called as palisade and uh, spongy cells in between them this meso in the mesophyll cells these chloroplasts are located these organelles that is chloroplasts are located uh they are also found in the guard cells if you see the structure of stomata which was explained in the last in the last chapter okay so in the uh, you will find the guard cells which are present in the stomata there also this chloroplast is present okay and it is estimated to about 5 lakhs of chloroplast per square millimeters of leaf surface of a of a leaf surface leaf surface if you start to count it is estimated that about you will get 5 lakhs chloro uh, chloro uh, chloroplast per square millimeters okay so this was all about the chloroplast so the, now we will see what are some of the raw materials for photosynthesis that are needed for the photosynthesis to uh, to be carried uh, carried out successfully there are some raw materials which are required the very first and essential raw material is carbon dioxide as already i have told from where this carbon dioxide is obtained it is obtained from the atmosphere itself atmosphere contains about 0.03% of the carbon dioxide okay and this is the main source of carbon dioxide to all the green plants 
in the case of aquatic plants where from where will they get the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide which is dissolved in water about 0.3 percent of carbon dioxide is dissolved in water and that dissolved carbon dioxide is only the source for or the source of carbon dioxide for aquatic green plants the next thing is Water, another raw material, another very raw, important uh, raw material which is required for the process of photosynthesis is water. Okay, so from where this uh, water is uh, obtained, it is obtained, it is basically absorbed by the roots of the plant. Okay, from the soil, the, the soil contains water, the soil water which is present that is only absorbed that was also explained in the last chapters. Absorbed from the soil by the roots by the process of osmosis it is conducted upward the water is conducted upward through the stem to the to the leaves from the from the roots it will get absorbed it will move to the stem and ultimately it will move to the to the leaves okay and uh, through which channels through the xylem tissues then for, uh, it will be transported to all the cells of the leaf through the veins through the veins it will be transported to all the parts of the plants and all the branches so this is how the transportation of water takes place. Then very, uh, one, uh, the next uh, very important raw material for photosynthesis is the solar energy or the sunlight. And we all know sun is the ultimate source of energy. So photosynthesis can take place only in the presence of sunlight. If sunlight is not there, the initial process of photosynthesis will not start. Okay, for the if one more thing happen, uh, it happens that suppose the intensity of light is low or if it is very cloudy. Okay, so uh, what if, it, that will also may affect the rate of photosynthesis. There are various other factors which will affect the uh, efficiency of photosynthesis. Okay, that will be explained later in the same chapter. Photosynthesis can take place only in the sunlight. Light is very much essential to carry out the process of photosynthesis. Light energy is converted into, this light energy is only converted into chemical energy during the process of photosynthesis. Okay. So light energy from the, from the sun is absorbed by the green color pigment that is the chlorophyll. About 250 molecules of chlorophyll forms one quantasome. Okay. 250 molecules of chlorophyll, they will combine together and they will form one quantasome. Okay. Uh, one quantasome and that will only absorb the sunlight. This is capable of, this one quantasome is capable of trapping the smallest unit of solar energy. The solar energy is, is, is in the form of photons. So these quantasomes will absorb these photons, the quantasomes which are, which are formed of 150 molecules of chlorophyll. Okay. Trapping the smallest unit of solar energy, which is converted, and then that solar energy or photon that will get converted into chemical form or into chemical energy. The process of converting this solar energy into chemical energy or solar energy into chemical form that is termed as photochemical act. Okay, the light is getting converted into chemical form. That is why it is termed as photochemical act you have to keep in mind this term photo what is photochemical act the process of converting solar energy into chemical energy is termed as photochemical act so this these are the uh, raw materials which are required for the process of photosynthesis okay let us move ahead okay and see the next topic that is regulation of stomatal opening and for letting the carbon dioxide, for carbon dioxide to enter, the stomatal aperture should open. So how does this regulation takes place? We'll be observing that. Now the next thing we will be seeing is regulation of stomatal opening. Stomata are minute opening occurring in large number of lower surface of, surf, uh, of the leaf. So we all know that uh, stomata are found in large number on the lower surface of the leaf. Its main function is to let the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in the uh, during photosynthesis. So uh, basically the basic function is the exchange of gases, inlet of carbon dioxide and exit of oxygen which is the byproduct of photosynthesis. When it is dark, 
okay what, what will happen when uh, when the uh, when there is no sun it is dark the stomata will close okay you can see here in the dark the, the stomata will be closed whereas in the during the daytime it will be open okay so what actually happens during the daytime the guard cell will become turgid okay due to the influx of of water from the epidermal cells from the from the subsidiary cells what will happen water will start to enter inside the guard cell making it more and more turgid when it will be more and more turgid what will happen the inner thick wall of the guard cell they will set apart opening the stomatal aperture on the other hand during the dark or when the sun is not there what will happen the uh, movement of water will take place from the guard cell into the subsidiary cell due to which the guard cells will turn flaccid when it will turn flaccid what will happen closure of stomatal aperture will take place means uh, the inner thick wall will come close to each other and pa partial closure of the stomatal aperture will be resulted in order to minimize water loss from the leaves through transpiration okay during the night time what happens the uh, stomatal aperture somewhat it uh, partially it closes okay why does it closes in order to prevent loss of water through transpiration since that if the temperature is high naturally transpiration will take place when there is light when there is light after the sunrise they, they reopen and allow the carbon dioxide to diffuse in transpiration occurs uh, along with photosynthesis uh, we all know when when this stomatal aperture will be open and photosynthetic process is taking place it uh, can you stop transpiration no transpiration cannot be stopped okay because when the stomatal aperture is open naturally it is not only that carbon dioxide will be taken in oxygen will also go out and oxygen is going out along with that water vapor which is being formed that will also uh, that will also move out so if the stomatal aperture is open you can one cannot prevent transpiration to take place due to the process one can say and due to this process only one can say that transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis okay transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis so uh, because it cannot be closed through the open uh, through the opening of the uh, this stomatal aperture once it is open for the exchange of gases naturally since the temperature is high transpiration will also take place so transpiration cannot be checked Okay, that is why it is said that transpiration is the price which the plant pay, uh, pays for photosynthesis. The closing and opening of the stomata are, are upon the uh, on the account of movement of water in and out of the guard cell. The movement um, um, water movement in and out of the of the guard cell will result into the turgid, turgid, the, the, the guard cells turning into turgid and flaccid condition. So. Uh, the, they have thicker walls if you talk about the guard cells they have a thicker walls in uh, inner walls facing each other near in the opening the inner wall is thickened and the outer wall is thin the outer wall which we talk about is thin yes their cytoplasm they will contain chloroplasts so due to the movement of water what happens it become it becomes turgid and if due to the um, uh, outward movement of of water from the guard cells to the epidermal cell it will, it will turn flaccid so uh, coming to the opening and closing opening and closing of stomata uh, this was in general i have explained but there are some theories which uh, which are uh, which decide the opening and closing of the stomata these two theories are sugar concentration theory and potassium ion exchange theory this was also ex explained to you in the last last class also but again a uh, little bit more in detail will be moving okay so there are two theories about the opening and closing of stomata the first one is sugar concentration theory so sugar concentration theory so the first one is sugar concentration theory so during the daytime the guard cell begin to photosynthesis photosynthesis so that means the photosynthesis process will start during the during the daytime in the daytime the guard cells begin to carry out the process of photosynthesis sugar that is glucose produced during the process increases the osmotic pressure 
So as we all know, during the daytime when the photosynthesis process will take place, then sugar which is produced uh, as a result of photosynthesis in the form of glucose. Okay, they, actually the result of uh, photosynthesis is glucose. The food is produced in the form of glucose. Okay, so this is produced during the process of uh, process of photosynthesis. It will increase the osmotic pressure. Okay, inside the guard cells, the osmotic pressure will increase due to which this draws the water from the adjoining cells into the into the guard cells by the process of endosmosis. Okay, so in the daytime, due to increase in the concentration of sugar or glucose, which is produced by photosynthesis, water will start to move from the subsidiary cells into the guard cells. Guard cells making it more and more turgid. Okay, this happens in the daytime. This draws in water from the adjoining cells due to endosmosis. Guard cell will become more and more turgid and bulge outward due to their outer wall. Okay, and they will uh, they will become fully distended. The stomatal opening will thus windens and the stomata stomata opens. The diffusion of the gases in and out will start. This diffusion of gases out from outside, carbon dioxide will start to move, and from inside, what will happen? Oxygen will start to move out. This fulfills the need of carbon dioxide gas uh, for the process of photosynthesis and for allowing. Trans, uh, transpiration transpiration will also once, once the uh, once the aperture is open there will be a free movement of water as well as um, it's water vapor as well as the respiratory gases and photosynthetic gases that is uh, that is carbon dioxide when the water content of the leaf falls down during the day during the uh, evening time what will happen when the when the water content of the leaf will fall down the water is drawn out from the guard cells Okay, so what will happen for suppose for any reason uh, what happens the the, the uh, subsidiary cells they lose water. What will happen from the guard cells water will start to move into the uh, subsidiary cells. When the water will move uh, from the guard cells to the subsidiary cells by the process of exosmosis what will happen it will turn flaccid. Once it turns flaccid the stomata aperture will, uh, gets closed. When the water content of the leaf falls down the water is drawn out of the guard cell due to by the process of exosmosis, making them flaccid. This results in the straightening of the, the straightening of the guard cells, and the inner inner thick wall will, will become somewhat straighter, which results in the stomatal closure. This will this will what happen? So this is all about the sugar concentration theory, which results due to the formation of sugar as a result of photosynthesis let us move or move on to the next theory which is responsible for the opening and closing of stomata and that is potassium ion exchange theory according to this theory what happens there is influx of potassium ion takes place by active transport the uh, subsidiary says they contain this uh, uh, potassium ion so stomatal opening and closing depends upon the generation of potassium ion gradient a potassium ion gradient is develop and that takes place during the daytime during the daytime stomata when the stomata opens it uh, it opens due to the due to a gradient develop a potassium ion gradient which is develop during the daytime the presence of sunlight there when sunlight is there at that time what happened starch is converted into malic acid the starch which is the i told you that glucose is produced and but this glucose will be stored in the plants in the form of starch Okay, but and what will happen during the daytime? This starch is uh, is converted to malic acid. Starch will get converted into malic acid, and malic acid uh, uh, malic acid dissociates into malate malate ions and hydrogen ions. So this malic acid will get itself dissociated into malate ions and hydrogen ion. And there is exchange of hydrogen and potassium ion between the guard cells. Okay, In, inside hydrogen ions will be produced by the dissociation of this malic malic acid. Means malic acid will dissociate into malate ions and uh, hydrogen ions. Okay, so hydrogen ions will start to move from uh, means from the guard cells to out outside. Whereas from from outside potassium ion will start influx of potassium ion will take place by active transport. Between the guard cells and the neighboring epidermal cells. This is called process of ion exchange. This is the process of ion, ion exchange. Hydrogen ion is moving from inside to outside and potassium ion from outside of the guard cell to inside. Okay. 
पोटेशियम आयन फ्रॉम द एडजेसेंट सेल्स आर एक्टिवली पम्प्ड इन टू द गार्ड सेल्स बाय द यूजेज ऑफ ए टी पी दैट इज ओनली कॉल्ड एज एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट देन पोटेशियम आय विथ मेलेट आय forms potassium so now potassium ion will uh, will come inside inside malate ions are already present so it will form potassium malate and due to the presence of this potassium malate it will reduce the water potential in the guard that will reduce the water potential of the guard cells when the water potential is uh, is reduced the water will start to move inside the guard due to the uh, reduction in the water potential water from the subsidiary cells will start to move inside okay Uh, water will start to move inside the guard cells, and diffusion of water in the guard cells this will increase the turgidity of the guard cells, and they will become more and more distended. They will become fully distended, and that will be helpful in opening of the stomata. So this what this what actually happens during the daytime. What will happen during the night time now? In the absence of light, efflux of the potassium and influx of hydrogen ion will take place when there is no light in the in, uh, in the evening time or during the night time efflux of potassium ion will from the movement of of potassium ion from inside of the guard cell to the outside in the epidermal cells or subsidiary cells will take place and the movement of hydrogen ions from from the subsidiary cells to the uh, to the guard cells will will take place okay so what will happen water moves out from the guard cells due to the, the op opposite movement of the ions in the night time what will happen movement of water from the guard cells into the subsidiary cells will start to take place and as you all know when the movement will uh, or uh, exosmosis of water will take place what will happen in the guard cells will become flaccid and the stomatal stomatal aperture will get closed the guard cells will lose their turgidity and their kidney shape they will no no more they will remain in a kidney shape uh, but they will turn into flaccid flaccid structure this is uh, this causes closing of the stomata this is how closing of the stomata will take place okay now let us see the next topic that is there are various adaptations that are found in the leaf Uh, in order to carry out the process of photosynthesis this will be the last topic for the day that is adaptation in the leaves for photosynthesis let us see what are the adaptations leaves are flat and thin if you see most of the leaves they are flat and they are very thin structures okay and collectively provide a large surface that means they will process they are flat they will provide a large surface area which helps the plants to absorb more and more sunlight means maximum uh, exposure of the sunlight they can absorb maximum amount of uh, the exposed sun, uh, sunlight okay so they are flat and thin moreover they are thin and they are reduced uh, when when they are thin it means the distance between the cells adjoining cells is very less which reduces the distance over which diffusion of carbon dioxide has to take place means for the diffusion of gases uh, it will be uh, it will be far easy okay to carry out the process of diffusion when the when the leaves are very thin coming to the, the, the uh, coming to the next point the leaves have dense venation if you see the leaves basically the reticulate venation in the case of dicot dicot plant you will find a dense venation or network of veins is present this will uh, this will support the rapid transport of raw material okay this is uh, this will be helpful in the rapid movement of the raw material as well as the products which are formed by the process of photosynthesis through the mesophyll cells next the leaves are usually if you see the arrangement of leaves you will find it uh, arranged at the right angles to the uh, or right angle or perpendicular to the uh, light which for sunlight which falls upon the surface of the leaf okay leaves are usually arranged at at right angles to each other so as to absorb the maximum light large number of stomata present on the leaves also help in gaseous exchange there are large number of stomata which are present on both the surfaces but on the lower surface it is more in number so that are also helpful in gaseous exchange thin leaves perform better photosynthesis as they are facilitated by rapid transport when they are thin 
better better facilitation or movement of uh, of substances will takes uh, will take place rapid transport of systems due to lesser distance between the cells that will take place the upper part of the leaves have palisade if you uh, see the vertical section of a leaf you will find the upper part is having palisade cells which are having bent, uh, dense chloroplasts and th that is very much helpful in carrying out the process of photosynthesis at a faster rate means uh, this uh, palisade, palisade cells they contain chloroplast and chloroplast in the chloroplast walls of the thylakoid they possess the green color pigment that is chlorophyll and that is very much helpful in carrying out the photosynthetic process that is why it's written that chloroplast will perform photosynthesis at a faster rate okay so this was all about for the topic that i have uh, explained to you today for today's session okay and i have prepared a powerpoint presentation that uh, will be moving ahead now okay so let us move to move on to the powerpoint presentation chapter 6 photosynthesis what we are what we are going to study in this chapter we will be seeing today importance of photosynthesis chlorophyll chloroplast raw materials for photosynthesis regulation of stomatal opening and adaptation in leaves for photosynthesis or for the synthesis of uh, of our food plants self food producers all living organisms need food animals need food for plants and therefore they are called, they are termed as heterotrophs plants prepare it from them for themselves and therefore they are termed as autotrophs what is the process of photosynthesis it is an important activity of all green plants by this plants are able to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and light energy photosynthesis uh, in photosynthesis the essential chemical steps in the process are same as the other as all the other green plants so this in this process of photosynthesis uh, the, the green green pl plants where we will find the carbon dioxide is required from the atmosphere oxygen is given out into the atmosphere sunlight is required the ultimate source of energy that is the sun and glucose to the plant the glucose which is formed as a result is uh, it is for the plant tissue it gets stored in the plant tissue and this get converted into starch definition of photosynthesis photosynthesis is the process by which living plant cells containing chlorophyll produce food substances that is glucose and starch from carbon dioxide and water by using light energy importance of photosynthesis we'll see what are the significance of photosynthesis it, it provides food for all the living organisms photosynthesis is ultimate source of energy and food for all living beings directly for plants and indirectly for animals and humans who eat the plants or the plant eating animals indirectly or indirectly it is the result of photosynthesis the, the source of energy is photosynthesis itself then for the oxygen supply photosynthesis is the only biological process which releases oxygen to the atmosphere oxygen supports all living all life on the earth no living beings can remain alive without oxygen this oxygen uh, this photosynthesis controls the carbon dioxide concentration photosynthesis helps to keep the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere constant carbon dioxide being released during respiration by living organisms it is used as a raw material during the process of photosynthesis then this uh, due to the process of photosynthesis only it supplies uh, the additional plant products all useful plant products like timber fiber oil drugs rubber resin etc are derived by photosynthesis chlorophyll the vital plant pigment the green coloring matter which is found in the plant is the chlorophyll 
it is contained in microscopic cells there are nine types of chlorophyll out of these nine types chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b are best known for their function and they are found in abundance chlorophyll absorbs the blue and red light at both ends of the visible spectrum in a spectrum visible spectrum seven colors are there there seven red and blue lights are at the end one end red light and the other other end the blue light it reflects the green light and that is the reason chlorophyll appears green it absorb blue and red lights are most effective the absorbed blue, blue and red lights are most effective to carry out the process of photosynthesis the wavelength of that it is most important for the process to carry on in a right way too much chlorophyll can destroy the chlorophyll pigment chlorophyll is highly sensitive to light too much light destroys it the formation of chlorophyll itself depends on the exposure of the plant to light the grass growing in the shade under a stone turns yellow due to the non formation of new chlorophyll and disintegration of the older one in the absence of light and this is the reason uh, light is very much important chloroplasts the site of photosynthesis these are minute oval bodies bounded by double membrane if you see the structure of chlor uh, chloroplasts these are double membranous structure their interior contains closely packed flattened sacs which are called as thylakoids they lie in a colorless ground substance called stroma you can see here the vertical section of a chloroplast show, uh, showing the stroma the granum thylakoids which are flattened uh, uh, flattened sacs and the fret channels which are the interconnecting bars between the between the granum there may be 40 to 50 chloroplasts in a cell the pigment chlorophyll is contained in the wall of thylakoids so this is where the uh, pigment chlorophyll is found or its, its location okay chlorophyll is highly complex substance composed of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and magnesium chloroplasts are mainly contained in the mesophyll cells located between palisade and spongy cells of leaves so if you will cut the vertical section you will find the palisade and the spongy cells in the, uh, in between these the mesophyll cells are present and there itself the chloroplasts are located also found in the guard cells of the stomata and outer layer of green stems there may be 5 lakh chloroplasts per square millimeter of leaf surface if you find a leaf surface there you may you may if you start to count you may find it approximately 5 lakh chloroplasts what are the raw materials for photosynthesis the first one is carbon dioxide atmosphere which contains about 0.03% carbon dioxide is the main source of carbon dioxide aquatic plants obtain it from the surrounding water which contains 0.3% or more of it next is water another raw material for the process of photosynthesis absorbed from the soil by the roots by the process of osmosis means water is absorbed from the soil by the roots of the plant by the process of of osmosis conducted upward water is conducted upward through the stem to the leaves by the xylem tissues transported to all cells of the leaf through veins and their branches next is solar energy this is the next raw material as we all know sun is the ultimate source of energy 
photosynthesis can take place only in sunlight means sunlight will initiate the process of photosynthesis light energy is converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis light energy from sunlight is absorbed by the green color pigment that is chlorophyll about 250 molecules of chlorophyll form one quantosome this is able to capable of trapping the smallest unit of solar energy that is photons which is converted into chemical energy the process of converting solar energy into chemical energy is termed as photochemical act you can see here the permeation of raw material how it is taking place water is getting absorbed by the roots from the soil then carbon dioxide diffuses through the stomata of the leaves and sun rays are sunlight is also absorbed by the chlorophyll which are present in the leaf itself now the regulation of stomatal opening for letting in carbon dioxide you can see here the open and closed structure of the stomata in this figure the opening and closing of stomata can be seen the first that is figure a you can see an open stomatal aperture whereas in the second one you will find it closed a uh, you, you, you can find the guard cells are turgid the stomata or the mouth is opened whereas in b you will find the guard cells are flaccid due to which the stoma closes stomata are minute opening occurring in large number the, on the lower surface of leaf its main function is to let let in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis when it is dark stomata tend to close their opening in order to minimize water loss from the leaves through transpiration when there is light as after sun sunrise they reopen to allow carbon dioxide to diffuse in transpiration occur or uh, occurs along with photosynthesis okay means when when photosynthesis is taking place transpiration will also take place because the stomatal aperture is open one cannot stop to, uh, the transpiration to take place if photosynthesis is taking place due to this process one can say that transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis the closing and opening of stomata are on the account of movement of water in and out of the guard cells they have thicker inner wall facing the opening a thin outer wall on the opposite side the cytoplasm contains chloro chloroplasts opening and closing of stomata now we will see here uh, the theories which are behind the opening and closing of of uh, stomata okay where inward movement of water which turns the uh, the guard cells turgid and outward movement movement of water which turns the guard cells into flaccid form uh, results into opening and closing of the stomata there are two theories about opening and closing of the stomata the first one is sugar concentration theory during day time what happens in this theory during the day time the guard cells begin the process of photosynthesis sugar that is glucose produced during the process increases the osmotic pressure due to the increase in the osmotic pressure water will draw in from the adjoining cells by the process of endosmosis guard cells become turgid and bulge outward due to their outer wall the stomatal stomatal opening widens as the stomata opens the diffusion of gases in and out begins this fulfills the need for carbon dioxide gas for photosynthesis and for allowing transpiration when the water content in the leaf falls down the water is drawn out of the guard cells due to exosmosis making the guard cells flaccid as a result this results in the straightening of their inner thin walls 
which results into stomatal closure means the stomata will get will get closed next next theory is potassium ion exchange theory during the daytime stomatal opening and closing depends on the generation of potassium ion gradient during daytime the presence of sunlight starch is converted into malic acid malic acid will get dissociated into malate ions and hydrogen ions there is an exchange of hydrogen ion and and potassium ion between the guard cells and neighboring epidermal cells this is called the process of ion exchange means efflux and influx of ions is taking place potassium ion from the adjacent cell are actively pumped into the guard cell by the usage of atp okay this is influx of potassium ion then this results by the usage of atp active transport potassium ion with malate ions will form potassium malate presence of potassium malate will reduce the water potential in the guard cell due to the reduction in the pot uh, water potential the guard cells the water will start to move into the guard cells making them more and more turgid diffusion of water in guard cells increases the turgidity and they become fully distended this helps in opening the stomatal aperture during night in the absence of light efflux or outward movement of potassium ion and influx of hydrogen ion will take place water moves out of the guard cells guard cells will lose turgidity and then their kidney shape which will cause closing of stomata now there are certain adaptations in the leaves in order to carry out the process of photosynthesis leaves are flat and thin and collectively provide a large surface which helps the plant to absorb maximum light their thinness reduces the distance over which diffusion of carbon dioxide has to take place the leaves have the leaves have dense venation a network of veins to support rapid transport of raw material as well as products to and from the mesophyll cells leaves are usually arranged at right angles to each other so as to absorb maximum light large number of stomata are present on the leaves that also helps in the gaseous exchange thin leaves perform better photosynthesis as they are facilitated by rapid transport system due to lesser distance between them the upper part of the leaves have palisade cells bearing dense chloroplast which perform photosynthesis at a faster rate so this was all about the chapter so you need to revise the chapter from the book also as well as the i'll be providing you the notes also that also you can go through there are some homework questions that you need to write in your copy in your biology copy okay so please write this uh, upon your understanding you can refer the notes that i will be supplying as well as your book also you can consult to write the answers of these questions question number 1 why do leaves turn yellowish if they do not get plenty of sunlight question number 2 why are the cells of epidermis of a leaf thin and transparent next question does any explain uh, the statement transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis means uh, Uh, how can you explain this statement okay by which process is solar energy converted into chemical energy so again i'll be reading the questions why do leaves turn yellowish if they do not 
turn uh, if they do not get plenty of sunlight second question why are the cells of epidermis of a leaf thin and, and transparent third one explain the statement uh, transpiration is the price which the plant pays for photosynthesis and the last question will be by which process is solar solar energy converted into chemical energy so this was all for the day okay you need to uh, complete your work and uh, write write your work in the copy this is all uh, for today thanks and goodbye